it's it's like it's like a like 30 concerts at once right <laughs> so but for the most part you got the guys with the big speakers that are portable and they're all in their locker and they're all playing a different song so you're listening to like you're listening you're like okay you got the corner with the running backs that we playing something to get turned up or whatever some the linebackers is probably playing old 50 like get rich or die trying you got country on one side you got gospel probably on one side on sunday like so you you're listening and you're like okay it's like a whole lot of stuff but yeah it's literally like maybe like 10 concerts at once Hey, what it do with the business is. It is another week in the books with the On Deck TV podcast. I am Spike Lou. Man, how let your boy Animal Brown, Animal underscore Brown. If you're looking for me on Instagram, Twitter, and maybe TikTok coming soon. Maybe TikTok. I am Spike Lou in these same social streets, and I beat you to the punch, man. I created that TikTok. The dog, <laughs> the voiceover dog videos are the funniest thing on the internet. Have you seen those? I have not seen that. Dude, it's like they'll put the camera in the dog's face and then like the dog done something crazy. Like this one dog ran away and chased the mailman. Mailman fell, the lady like broke her ankle and some shit. And then it's like the lady like, hey, I am the Sparky. I think it's a good thing to chase the mailman down the street while my owner is butt naked chasing behind me. And it's, and it's in Siri voice. Man, that shit oh, that's funny. Hilarious. I got fuck with that. there like, oh, yeah, I've been on TikTok heavy with those. I'm slipping. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and create me a little TikTok. Fuck it. They got like how to do shit around the house stuff on there. That shit fine, really. Really, it's some, it's some old watch nigga channels and everything, cooking I'm channels and shit. I'm on there. I'm here for it, man. Hey, action packed episode. Shout out to everybody that checked us out last week, man. We got a great response from that cook up boss interview. We appreciate Cub. Y'all make sure go check his album out to us out right now. Please go check up that cookout boss, man. We had a great time. It was a good interview. Like you said, a lot of great feedback, man. So we look forward to uh, keeping it shaking with our guy cook up, man. Actually, hey, and we are gonna keep it shaking with these interviews too, man. We kicking off uh, the month of Thanksgiving with things we are thankful for. Hey, man, one of those things we thankful for are the guests that we've had this year. So we are gonna give Absolutely. you, hey man, let them know what we got popping this, this week. Absolutely, man. We got athlete, man, Jonathan Hilleman, Giants running back, man. He stopped by to tell us what it's like dropping bars off and toting that rock. So you guys check that interview out. Also, we're going to go over Little Wayne's pop-up visit with Donald Trump and how hip-hop reacted to that. We're also going to talk about the album uh, from West Side Gun that's coming your way. Is he dropping too much music? And also, last but not least, Tupac Estates drops a verse about voting. People are up in a outrage about that. But first and foremost, man, we want to start off with the BET Awards and your boy, Da Baby and Little Baby. Uh, they were nominated for about 18 BET Awards and walked away with one, not a piece, but just one amongst the two of them. My question to you, there was a lot of backlash about this. Did BET get it right? Should they be furious about only getting one award? This is tough. Uh, they were one for 15, which is crazy, which might as well be one for 18. It's the same damn thing. Um, if I'm if I'm the baby, I'm tight because he went over 12. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't make any damn sense. Now, I will give it to him. He did respond to this, and he took the high road and congratulated everybody that won. He didn't start no shit. He shouted BT out, congratulated everybody that won. That's cool. That's perfect. I would have been hot about the shit, but I would have been more hot about BET, and I think they dropped the ball in their limited-ass nominees. This is how you end up with somebody getting 12 nominations and zero wins and if you look at the categories he slick didn't deserve to win any of them that but and that's not to knock what he was doing it was just better people in the categories for whatever category it was like it's a legitimate case for him going over 12 that mm. that shows a lack of when you've got two people in 15 16 17 different categories two people then BET has to do a better job of putting their nominations together for these hip hop awards. Do better next time. You got a whole year to plan this out. Don't have the same damn people in every category <laughs> only for them to lose and not win one. It doesn't make any sense. I'm more hot at BET. 
Shout out to the baby for taking a high roll. Little baby, he was a little salty about it. The shit he said on that. Twitter. The baby commented on his photo, like the, of him saying, "I'd rather get money than than a B." That was little baby, right? And the baby commented under that, and like essentially saying, "Ditto." Uh well, uh, yeah, that's fair. But to the the question at hand, did BET get it right or were they robbed? No. Uh, we talked a lot about reading the room this year. Reading the room is girl power. Probably one of the biggest categories artists of the year. I think Megan Thee Stallion got it. I was out this weekend when I went to go grab some food. Played a whole set of all female artists. I think BET did a good job of catering towards the female MC in the year of the female MC. And if that means that the little baby and the baby not going to get a BET award, then so be it. Uh, I think I don't like little baby or the baby going to social media and talking about, oh, I'd rather get money because you don't do this to win BET awards. You don't do this so people can say you have a top five flow. You do this book supposedly because you love to do this and you're good at it. So like anything extra that just that just comes with it. And I'm not gonna stand on my high horse if I'm the baby or little baby about a BT award. It's not anything that's gonna stop my career. Like you nominated me, good look. Now I ain't even got to show up for your award show because I'm not gonna win anything. You did me a favor. Uh, so I think they 12, did a bro. little much. Yeah, absolutely. Over 12, bro. And you're tight if you go over. You don't. You nah, you take pride in what you less. do. You no. Nah, if you take pride in what you do, you don't want to go zero for twelve. I don't, I don't care <laughs> what it is. If it means anything, if it don't, you don't want to be. Because uh, uh, you don't want to be. You don't want to lose that tough. Like these people are competitive. Rappers are competitive. It's a competitive sport. And so you're going over for twelve. Well, I don't care if it's Grammys, BET Awards, VH1, MTV, whatever it is. You go, you do a goose egg like that. You lay an egg. You're gonna feel at least a little bit some type of way. You're gonna be tight about it. You hit on something important, and it's like you go over twelve and you do this because you're good at what you do. You enjoy your craft. Like you don't do this to win BET awards. And I'm not shitting on the BET awards. You can say the same thing with the Grammys. Like the end result is not what you do this for. In the moment, yeah, man, you a little sour, but I'm not going to social media. I'm not making posts. I'm not making a big deal. I don't even want to respond if you comment. If I am sour, I can keep that to myself because how I'm looking at it as an elite artist, if I'm the baby or little baby, I'll be here next year. I'll be here the year after that. And all of these people in the rest of these categories probably won't be. So I'll get my little BET award. This is another night the books famously said about spike Lou. now baby did little baby did win one he won for impact track of the year with the bigger picture which i could respect but yeah no they did listen bet did what we kind of expected they they show love to the ladies rhapsody won for lyricists megan won for rap artists of the year we knew that uh pop smoke was going to get new artists they paid homage to pop smoke by giving him the new artist award like we kind of you kind of see these things coming if you've ever watched one or two award shows before. You know how these things kind of go. I didn't expect them to, to go one for 15 like that. Like, that's a terrible shooting percentage. That's like Tony Snell. Like, it's horrible. I wasn't expecting that. And matter of fact, in December, we'll have our own award show, and we'll show, the, we'll show them how to do it. Uh, let, let's be clear about that. Uh, we're not going to have the same nominees in 17 different categories. That's where they drop the ball. They seem out of touch when they do shit like that. And they try to make it up by cleaning up with the winners. And then you end up stepping on your own feet again, because you made two of the most popular rappers in the game right now go one. So people are tuning in nuts. though. You know that, you know, that's so people will watch though. Like you got to have little baby and the baby in every category just so people will watch that. That's, uh, that's whack, bro. Just have a good I mean, product. That's, a, that's an award show, though. I mean, it, it's essentially like you, it's a, a marketing event, right? It's promo. They want them people to For come. Sure. They want people to like showcase. I don't necessarily think it's they ever do a good job in getting the correct talent, the right acknowledgement. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. yeah. Moving on. Uh, yo, boy, Wayne. Now, by the time y'all hear this, the presidential race will likely be decided. Uh, but over the weekend, Wayne put in his last minute support for President Trump and his platinum plan for Black America. Uh, the Internet promptly roasted Wayne uh, for his photo op and uh, cosign of the plan. Uh, my question, uh, should they have roasted Wayne for his uh, political views? 
That's a great question. Uh, Lil Wayne deserved everything he got. And not because he chose a side, because out of Lil Wayne's own mouth, continuous times, he said, I don't pay attention to politics. He don't even keep up with current events. Lil Wayne can't even tell you who the popular rappers are. are. I remember he thought he didn't know who Griselda was. He thought that somebody was a rap group that wasn't. 21 so when, 21 seven. So when I see him standing next to Donald Trump and putting out a statement on his Twitter saying that he endorses his platinum plan, I scroll right past it. I don't think twice about it. It's not who cares because he don't even know what's going on in his field. So with him to stand next to Trump, do whatever he does, like who gives a fuck? It's Lil Wayne. Like he's in, he's in his own world anyway. Um, so I, I I don't take that with a grain of salt. I was surprised at the amount of people who uh, I, I pick Roland Martin out of out of a, a lineup here. The people that are he interviewed Ice Cube when Ice Cube went over this and he kind of dug in, you know, this is where you went wrong. Some say trying to school him, some say chastising him, whatever it may be. But he took time out of his day to chastise Lil Wayne too. And that kind of clouds the water because no one cares politically what Lil Wayne does. No one, like not even Lil Wayne. And he said that before. So I thought the, 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 the reaction to him should have been like, okay, who gives a fuck? Because he has no idea what he's talking about. Yeah, for, for somebody who claims to only pay attention to sports, uh, to jump into the presidential race in the fourth quarter, uh, <laughs> down to the wire, it seems really stupid. And I w- and I, I, this would be the case if he co-signed anybody at this point. Uh, it, it just makes it, it seems very strange. The picture of him standing next, I ain't gonna lie, I thought, I thought that was a wax figure he was standing next to. Like, I thought, I thought the picture was fake. Like it, it didn't even look real. It just, it looked, that's pretty much the embodiment of 2020 as a year, that picture right there from everything for what Lil Wayne had on <laughs> to, to both of them with the thumbs up. It just looked like the twilight zone. So it, 2020 in a picture is Lil Wayne in the white house, giving the cosign to Donald Trump three days before the, probably the biggest election in our lifetime. Like this shit is fucking nuts. It makes no sense. I don't get it. I wouldn't put him in the same category as Ice Cube, like Roland Martin tried to do. Although he did say, okay, he cool. You want to go out here, stick your neck, like you repping it or that you fucking with it. Come on the show and explain to me what's in the Platinum Plan since it's such a good idea. And since you felt the need to put that out there in front of your 20 million followers on Twitter, that it's such a great idea and that Trump is for us. Cool. Come on my platform and explain it to me because I, I read it and didn't get it. That's, That's all disgusting. he was saying. And that'll, we know that'll never happen. Ice Cube tried it. I'll give him an E for effort. He tried it, got circles ran around him because he couldn't really explain what was in it. And he couldn't explain what was taken from his contract and put into the platinum plan. So he it, it, it makes you look even worse when you get exposed like that. That's really when people started questioning Cube. It was like, bro, like people would give Cube the benefit of the doubt. Wayne, well, nobody care about you, right? Nobody give a fuck about that. But Cube is somebody who has shown to be a little bit more in the moment when it comes to social issues. So when he goes on there and he's asked to explain himself, people are waiting. We're like, okay, I'll hear him out. People will hear Cube out. He can't explain himself. You get the humming, humming, stumbling, bumbling, nigga babbling left and right. And then people go, ah, shit. Like, what's you, the real agenda? Like, first thing we said in the chat, bro. You are exaggerating about it. Nah, that's a fact, though. No, that's your perception. You're exaggerating, talking about a nigga babbling and humbling and bumbling. The yeah, reason that Roland, the reason that Roland Martin made him look that way is because he's more versed in the subject. Ice Cube is new to this. And had Roland <laughs> Martin, Ice Cube is new to presenting policy, talking about policy. He's new to this. Had he, or excuse me, had Roland Martin took a different approach and, and, and maybe since you are so versed in this, tried to walk down the line with Ice Cube as to what you thought was happening, what is happening, the interview would have came out better. And I backed that point by saying Roland Martin is just looking for a quick little come up or a quick little, hey, he made the rapper look bad. Why on earth would I invite someone like Lil Wayne on my show to talk policy? That's bullshit. Why, why would I even invite? On 
Why would I invite him? But you know that's not valid. I'm not bringing this dude on my show to talk hey, about some shit. That Wayne he has put it out about. there. He co-signed it. So co Wayne co-signed yeah, the package. Okay, but you as a personality, you as someone who is a quote unquote expert, Roland Martin. It doesn't matter what Little Wayne says. You know the truth. So why am I bringing him on my show just to make him look bad? That's a What's waste the truth, of time. Though? What's the Whatever truth? Roland Martin is perceiving it to be because he's the one saying that, hey, I can point this, that, and the third out in the platinum plan that's not true because I'm well-versed. People invite me to the White House. People did this and that and the third. You're shaking your head, but no, this is what, what he, he told. He told Ice Cube this. I go to the White House. I've talked about these plans. He didn't say that? This, this, is, what, this is what Roland Martin asked, and he asked a question. I'm not talking about, okay, stop before you start. Okay. I'm talking about when he was speaking to Ice Cube and you referenced that. Right. He told Ice Cube, I go to the White House. I've talked about this plan. He didn't that, say that. Yeah, no, he may have. Okay, that, you that's shook your fine. head that he didn't. No, I'm, I'm shaking my head because what he asked of Cube was something that a, whether you're well-versed in politics or whether you're a newbie, he asked what any regular person would ask. Cube said, true, they took some pieces from my contract they wanted to pluck some stuff and they put it in the platinum plan. Okay, cool, Cube. Which part of the platinum plan came from your contract? That's you don't need to be a, a Rhodes scholar to ask that question. I, I don't care Roland Martin's background and how many times he went to the White House for dinner. Mm -hmm. I, this is a legitimate question that should be fairly simple to answer. And he was unable to answer that and he talked in circles. Thus, the babbling comment. Now, if you tell me you watched it and he answered it, I would love to hear you tell me what he answered with because well, I missed it. The babbling comment, that's what I had an issue with because you're saying that as if he is supposed to sound eloquent in what he's saying compared to someone who's well-versed in it like Roland Martin. You can pick any subject you like regardless of who's the smartest or not, but if you know more about the subject, you're going to make someone else stumble, especially when you set it up that way on your platform. And my point is saying all of that is, what's the point of it? Like, why am I inviting people like this to talk about policy that I don't believe that they know about to point out or prove that they're wrong? What does that get done or accomplished? Like, is he trying to say, well, these people shouldn't be talking politics anyway? Okay, great. That's your opinion. But for you to say, and I'm talking about Roland Martin, not you, but for you to say, hey, let's get on here and talk about it. And I bet you that I can show you that that plan sucks. Great. That, that's fantastic. Now, what are you going to do with that information of telling people that that plan sucks? You, you here to discredit Lil Wayne or are you here to get policy across that is going to help people? I, th I think that's I what think I would ask here, Roland Martin. People just want clarity. And so if, if but you're, you're not going to get clarity from someone like Ice Cube or Lil Wayne, that's my point. And if I'm Roland Martin, I know that because I visited the White House. So why am I calling them and asking them for clarity? And then why would you as a, a fan or someone looking at it, why are you holding him to a standard of, well, you should know the answer to this in order to validate everything that he's saying? Like, okay, he stumbled on it. So he didn't know that part, bro. And what? Does that take away from the whole thing? Yeah, yeah, it, it kind of does. It, it kills your credibility. That sucks. That sucks if that small part of that document is over however many pages that you say, well, he couldn't eloquate this part of it the way that I like. So it takes away from everything for me. Yeah, I think it does. That sucks. It does. It, if, if, I, if I say, yeah, man, they took some of my stuff and put it in. Okay, cool. What did they take out? Uh, yes, that you, when you led with that, and then you can't answer he, it. He yes, it does. Take Roland Martin led with that. No, no, Martin no, no, no. Asked him about said, what you, what no. did they take from your plan and, and put into that? He asked him that. That wasn't no, but, an ice but, but cube before that, they, they said, took my plan. He said they took pieces of my plan. He said that though. Roll because Roland Martin asked him. No, go back no. and look at the interview. No, 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 no. <laughs> you can even ahead. No, but that's Cube's incorrect, Twitter. bro. I've seen the whole interview. I don't have to look yeah, at Ice Cube's Twitter. I saw all of that too. And he said that they took pieces of my shit. That's what he said. He said that I came and met with them and they took pieces of my plan and put it in there. And he said, oh, okay, cool, what part? And he couldn't answer it. That's it. That's the, that's, I don't understand like what's the confusion of that? Like, I don't get why no you're like, oh, it. but he kind of worded it with a big word and Cube really didn't know the, like, no, See, you dude, try to confuse. You, that's what you and Roland Martin do. <laughs> Oh, he worded it with a big word. No one said that, bro. You, you should, guys you should barrel the cube for no reason. No, and, and Wayne, apparently. <laughs> See, 
And that's what people crazy right That's now. what people like you and Roland Martin do. I haven't shot any bail to Lil Wayne, but you try to clump it all in because you disagree with one part of it. That's not fair, and that's not how you get things done. For you to say that about Ice Cube and then throw the same thing on there with Wayne and then say, well, Wayne should go on there and talk about it. Like, what good is that going to do for anyone other than make Lil Wayne look bad? Worse than he clarity. already looks for signing uh, up for Donald Trump. Clarity for who? Do you need clarity from Lil Wayne? Yes. What type of clarity are you looking for? I need to know what he means when he says the plan is good. How I don't understand the com how complex is that? It's not complex. It's just being clear. Like you said, you want to make sure that Lil Wayne is speaking to a political plan and saying that it's good. And what about the platinum plan that he likes? That's what you want to know? Yeah. What makes it That's good? That's sick. That's sick. What makes it good? From you Lil Wayne, there, you like Wayne, know that. Like Wayne, Wayne, this, there's no difference in Wayne jumping on Twitter saying, go pack, go, and then getting invited to first take to talk about the Packers. How, what's the difference, it's dude? It's a big difference. Did you know Wayne was a sports fan before he was on Twitter? Did you have an learn, idea? Did, did anybody know that? you have to that? learn policy to follow the Packers? You, you still need to know what the did fuck you, you're doing like, to watch sports. You need to know what's going on, yes. Dude, did, did you have to learn policy? Time, and be, going but, on. but did you have to learn policy and be well-versed in a whole different type of legislation to watch sports, to enjoy it? People do it every day, bro. People pick up every day and start watching football. And don't know what you the learn fuck as is you going go. on. Right, and you learn as you go. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So for you, so for All he did was say, tweet it. All he used to do was tweet out, go Pat, go, and he would get right, invited to first obviously take. Obviously, he's been watching sports for a long time, so he can speak to that. Now, compare politics. He said he hasn't been doing that for a long time, and you're asking him to come speak to that on a first, type, first take type forum. Where does yes. that make sense? Because he put it out there. If he doesn't tweet that picture, does Roland Martin ask him to come on the show? What does that what, have to do with which what came you're first, saying, bro? Which came first, like bro? The, the picture doesn't validate him being a politician. Or no, no, policy. no. Which, which came first, Wayne saying the plan was good or Roland Martin asking him to come on the show to Man, explain the plan? Okay, which so if Wayne, first, tell, if Wayne tells me that the sky is purple, do you think that Michael deGrasse Tyson is going to invite him on his podcast to talk about physics? Which one came first, bro? That's all I want to know. I because mean, the only reason that he asked question, on the show was though. because of what he said. Is that correct? True, but what he then, said then what has no context. About? Six and a half hours later. I don't need that. Great. That's not that serious. Fantastic. With another album on the way. My <laughs> question to you. My question to you. West Side Gun is flooding the streets. <laughs> Are people getting tired of West Side Gun? Or do you think he should keep his elder rolling and dropping like no limit? No, I don't I don't think people are tired of him, but I think he's there's such thing as too much of a good thing and he needs to slow down. Um, he, I feel like you step on your own toes when you put out too much music in a short period of time, when you're, when you're at the quality of a West Side Gun. Like his first project that he put out, you could argue is one of the top albums of the year. So then when you put out two and three more projects after that, they're going to be downgrades. They're not going to be better than that. So I'm going to constantly be like, yeah, it's cool, but it wasn't that Pray for Paris though. Do you really want me saying that about your project because you just happen to be sitting on a thousand songs that you want to put out? Like, I, I get it. That's his whole thing. He's got this new one coming out. Hitler Wears Hermes 8. It's the eighth and final installment, hopefully, in the series. It feels like he's dropped eight projects this year. Like, it, 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 you can have a little bit of fatigue um, when it comes to this. And so I, I think he should slow down. I don't need this album right now. I've already got good material that he put out. He put out his album on Shady. He put out another mixtape in between the Pray for Paris joint at the top of the year. So it, on top of all the shit that Conway has put out and Griselda as a whole, he's representing the movement, not just himself. And so it can feel like overkill if you put out too much shit. I, he can keep this one. I'm going to check it out, though, because I fuck with him. But I don't need it, though. He can, he can slow down a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. I think you walk a fine line if you're him uh, over flooding the streets and it, and it being too much. And the reason why I don't think it's over flooding and I think that he should continue to do it the way he's doing. He said he's going to stop at the end of this year. I'm not sure if the retirement talk is still there, but if he's going to retire, then yeah, flood the market because next year people are going to be looking for West Side Gun and they can double back on these projects. And, and secondly, when you got an artist and even though, Conway to some extent and Benny, 
I don't know if they release as much as Westside, but he doesn't depend on lyrics, right? So Westside is a vibe. Westside is like the ad libs. It's the whole, it's the movement, as you said. So when you can drop something on a monthly basis, uh, every six weeks or however often he's doing and the movement stays strong, the vibe is continuously popping, I'm going to do it. Like, like he said in one of his raps on the uh, Benny, nigga, I'm Master P. I'm out the trunk with it, like Master P uh, when he dropped them 26 CDs in a year. And I like it. Now, if we get into talking about Benny and Conway doing it too and, and them being lyricists and you you walk a fine line of running out of raps. Like, I know them niggas is cold, but I ain't, it's, it's only so much rapping that you can do in a year. West Side, though, I like it. Keep it rolling. Keep it coming out. Keep the vibe going, keep the ad-libs going, increase the features and really drive up the demand as to where people release songs, he released projects. And then this year that he's about to take off or retire, the price of the brick just went up as Marlo say. See, come back. He, last year he was supposed to, la 2020 was supposed to be the retirement. I, I If I remember correctely, I um, thought it was he had mentioned that. No, I'm saying, I, 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 talking about like I'm done uh -huh. He was said this last year about this year. And so I was assuming that that means he was going to hang it up. We weren't going to get five projects in 2020. Uh, that, so maybe I read into that wrong clearly. Uh, but uh, do he's, I, I feel like he's doing himself a disservice when you can just put out the 15 hardest songs on one project. You combine that with what Benny just did you combine that with the EP and the album that Conway just did. And Griselda can run 2020 without putting out 25 different projects. Like you, you don't have to overdo it and drop double digit projects. That's the only thing that's like, okay, bro, you already the least, um, I ain't gonna say talented cause he good at what he do. But when it come to Benny and Conway, like, dude, give me, give me that shit all day long. At least lyrical. Right, compared to them, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, he's the least lyrical, exactly. So uh, compared to them, give me they shit. All day, seven days a week, twice on Sunday. And again, when you come out with your first joint, which is the most fierce one, maybe he should have just changed the order of them. Maybe he should have came out with the mixtape first, uh, Fly God is an Awesome God 2 first, then the, the the who made the sunshine and then you close the year with pray for Paris because that's the best out of all of them then maybe you do something like that but don't put the best one first because everything else i'm be looking up to it like yeah it's cool but it ain't that though that's the only problem i have with it and that's what's tough that's why people don't put out high quality multiple projects in a year man shit too hard to fucking do like he's not trying to have lightning strike twice bro like you're not gonna put two classics out in one year unless you dmx I don't think I don't that he know. is trying to, though. I think with somebody like Westside, you, you hit a home run your first at bat, then you'll take singles and doubles and hell, even you, you might even take a strikeout because, in my opinion, and it's not due to lack of talent, like all of this is this, this is he playing with house money, as they say. Mm. Like, no one would have expected three niggas from Buffalo in 2020 that, that are rapping, rapping with the exception of West side, who's uh, not even sure what he doing. And, and for that shit to be popping, like I'm rolling this shit out as often as I can too, because I think his aspirations and just from interviews that I've heard, they're different. Like he ain't trying to be the best rapper or stay on the charts for 52 weeks. I feel like that he's the type of guy, if I gave you Pray for Paris and you guys consider that a classic, great. I got six more albums and you ain't got to mm. like now one of them. Uh, but you're going to remember my name. And you're going to check for him just based off the greatness that I've done. Or if you like my merch, you're going to check out my CD. I think that he's a quantity over quality guy. But in that quantity, you find a lot of quality. Quantity yeah, over quality. It just, it just, that, that, that quantity over quality, that I, just, I, I can't remember the last time it worked. Master P. No, nah, those were quality projects. Don't do that. We're not going to do P any kind of way. And that was 1998, by the way. So if the last time that that model worked to you. <laughs> was 20 years ago. Yeah. Try it. Shit. No, He's no. working for it. I think if he had four. I don't know what, what happened to the chick or anybody else on their label. Uh, I can't even think of nobody else that raps with them. 
You talking about Armani Caesar? People, I know Armani Caesar, the chick, but uh, I'm thinking if they had any more guys like Stove God, anything like that. Yeah, he on there. They should be rolling them out too. That's one fault that I do see. It can't, I don't, I don't like it being the main three all the time. Like they should do take the four no limit style and the Armani sees. I know she had a project out about two, three months ago, but it was okay. It didn't get that wet, didn't get the Griselda buzz that it should have, but they need like two more people in Roston and just keep rolling them out. My man from Detroit, Boldy, he came out with two projects this year under they under they the price of tea in China and the, the Versace was it was, yeah, it was like uh, it didn't give me Griselda feel. Like See, that's my, niggas, that's what I'm saying. And, like, and that's the difference though. Like, that's why I say they should do it more often to figure that sound out. Cause everything that No Limit put out in that year gave you No Limit feel, unless it was like Skull Duggar or some shit. Yeah, that's but a fact. It, it gave you like, like, nigga, this No Limit. P on there, nigga, it's a soldier song on there, nigga. It's a, I miss my homie song. Like they need to, to, to get that formula down of what each CD is going to consist of and start adding more people to the roster. That's what I would say. And, and that means put, giving people that music that he finna put out. He, he can give other people them tracks, dude. I promise you. If so. Um, man, before we get to this interview, let's talk quickly to Pac. Pac's IG page is ran by his estate and they posted lyrics from one of his songs, Me Against the World, encouraging people to vote. Now, fans of the account criticized that post saying that Pac wouldn't approve of either one of these candidates. So why are y'all posting on here talking about voting? Was the pushback from Pac fans fair or foul? No, it wasn't foul. Uh, the post wasn't about the candidates. It wasn't about like if you vote for Biden, if you like Trump, the post was about expressing your right to vote. And regardless how Tupac would have felt about either candidate, in my opinion, I think that he would have been maybe someone out here that, that wanted you to express your rights as a uh, American. And whether you felt like it was voting or whether you felt like it was protesting or doing whatever you see fit, I think that Pac would have been someone who, who definitely wanted you to be involved, definitely wanted you to take note of the processes that's going on. Like I said, regardless of the, the choices that you have in front of you, it's not really about that. It's about the change that comes from the action. So I think Pac would have been in full support of, of a post that, that at least called to action in some sort of way. Yeah, yeah, I agree a thousand percent. Nowhere in the post did it say hashtag Biden, Harris, hashtag Trump 2020. It didn't have any of that. It, it didn't co-sign anyone in particular. For all we know, he could they could have been talking about voting on the local level. It, it, either way, he and also let me back it up. Pac was involved in community stuff and kind of understood the importance of local leadership. I don't re I don't quite remember him talking too much about the presidential race. I could be wrong. I don't remember it, but I do vaguely remember him being involved on a local level or at least trying to get involved on a local level or on a state level. And so I, so I think this makes sense in that regard. I agree a hundred percent. People are, I know the, the, the big dog and pony show is the presidential race. We get all that. That's the one that gets the most attention. That's the one that gets the big dollar spent on all the promo and marketing and all that shit. But there's obviously local elections going on at the same time. You don't just go to the poll, pick your president and walk out. Um, so I definitely think he would be open for exercising your right to voice your opinion and by doing so through voting. So I'm not mad at the estate. I don't know who runs it. I'm not sure if it's family or people that may have worked with them or a fucking intern. I have no idea, but I, I'm assuming that it's somebody in that company that's closer to him or was close to him uh, than I was or than his fans were. So they may have a little bit of a better idea of what he was into. I don't know. But uh, I, I don't see anything wrong with it. I think people overreacted with the backlash. Like it wasn't, in my opinion, it wasn't that deep at all. Yeah, people trying to find anything to be in an uproar about now, it seems like. Yeah, basically. Um, now, listen, guys, we've got a dope interview coming up. NFL running back Jonathan Hilleman. He's got a new record label. He's got a new album. We're going to talk to him about, you know, hip hop and sports, man, and what kind of the fascination is between ballers, rappers, athletes, the whole nine. 
Y'all check this out, man. I'm going nowhere. Jonathan Hillman right now. Hey, man, I told you we had a special guest in the building. We got John Hilleman, a.k.a. Juan Don, in the building. What's good with you, bro? Yes, sir. What's going on? What's going on, fellas? Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, we, we, we know you got new music. You know yeah. you got the record label. Well, yeah. first, we got to ask. You know, whenever people talk about athletes that decide right. to make music, it's always kind of looked at with a little bit of a side eye. In your opinion, where does that stigma come from, and do you think it's fair? Uh, I do think it's fair. Uh, I think the stigma comes from just – I kind of say it in one of my songs, that ball players want to be rappers and vice versa. It's kind of like everybody wants – like rappers want to be ball players and ball players want to be rappers. It's for the lifestyle, you know what I'm saying? Like this mm. is the lifestyle that it leads, and they kind of think, well, that job seems pretty easy. I'm going to just go do it. And they don't really understand how – tough it is those long nights in the studios listening to beats doing your research uh things of that nature so i can i can see why it's, it's put out as a side eye that stigma is like ah he probably just that's a side hustle for him but for me i kind of treat it just like i would treat ball i mean football for me obviously take care of my body you know preparing myself you know week in and week out for you know game day and things like that it's no different for you know any off time I have in the studio, I'm just listening to beats, listening to other artists, working with other artists. So, yeah, but I can see that. I, I can definitely see that. And plus, I mean, some some athletes who rap just aren't really good. So, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's kind of how it just goes. That's probably the biggest. That's probably the biggest <laughs> stigma you got to deal with right yeah, there. Yeah. Uh, going back yeah. to Shaq. So let me ask you. I know I followed some of your career through Boston College and and your, and your college career. When did you know that you wanted to do music seriously and also be able to juggle what you were doing as an athlete seriously? Right. So, I mean, so after my freshman season, uh, my sophomore year, I actually got hurt. I broke, you know, my I fractured my foot and broke my ankle on, on the left side. So I had pretty much a lot of time to sit out, you know, after surgery. I had a lot of time to just, you know, focus on other things. And that's when I kind of got into just, you know, playing around. No, I've been freestyling and, writing rhymes since I was 13 years old. So, I mean, during that time, my friend, one of my good friends, uh, Mike Noel, who was the punter on our team, he was a DJ on, um, you know, the the nights off, like Thursday nights at like the local bars in Boston, you know what I'm saying, just for a little side hustle. And so he had like equipment. So he just like, he'd always hear me freestyling right before we go out and stuff like that. He's like, oh, John, you should get, you should get on, man. You should, you know, say, say something. I was like, nah, you know, I just do it for fun. So he was just like, nah, you should. So he gave me a beat and I freestyled to it. And he said, nah, I'll give you a different beat, a better one that I was kind of feeling a little more and freestyled on it and, you know, put it on SoundCloud. And it that kind of blew up throughout, you know, throughout the school a little bit. You know what I'm saying? People were playing it at parties, kind of just like giving me a, giving me a hard time about it. But then at the same time, people liked it. You know what I'm saying? So it was, it was kind of cool. And I was just putting out little things here and there during that time, but I kind of slowed down off of it just to really focus on football, but I'm I'm back on it now since I have a lot, you know, more freedom within, you know, myself as being a football player, a professional ball player, and you know, you know, a musician at the same time. I was just about to say, how how does when you get picked up by the Giants that does that you're like okay, the music gonna have to be on hold for a second? Are you like mentally saying that to yourself, or and is you're gonna come back to it? Or are you just taking what the opportunity is in front of you at the time? Yeah, it's kind of a little bit of both. I mean, obviously me, I, I try to find, you know, any little time during the season to, you know, obviously during the season, it's really just locked in on just, you know, the task week to week, you know, film, taking care of your body, you know, we're knowing the, the playbook for that week, the game plan for that week. But days off, I mean, you know, you listen to you get I get sent a, a bunch of beats so days off I may listen to some and you know see if I vibe to it see if I can write some things down or things like that um you know bye weeks are, are, are usually time when you know I'm kind of taking myself off of football a little bit it kind of just you know get into the music thing you know see what's going on with the label with other artists maybe collaborations and things like that definitely the off season's a big time because you know I'm training Usually training about eight hours a day, but then, you know, you got six, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you got 16, 16 hours of just idle time, right? So just recovering. And so usually just in that time, is usually spent in the studio. Which, uh, growing up being in Boston for college and then you grew up in Jersey, right? Right. 
what would you say influenced your style most? I would say I would definitely say Jersey. I mean, I'm from I'm from Plainfield, New Jersey. That's a, a inner city in uh, Central Jersey. I definitely say my style comes from because my uncles rapped. My uncles did music for a little bit, um, and you know I also have uncles that you know played. It was a musician. He's a saxophonist. He had some albums out. And my dad played the trumpet a little bit, but so I come from a pretty, you know, decent, you know, music background. But I would definitely say Jersey the most. Obviously, New York got, you know, you being from across the bridge, you know, you got that that flavor as well. But I definitely say the foundation is New Jersey, one hundred and ten percent. Yeah, because I'm trying to think who who popping from Boston right now. I say the biggest artist I know out there is a. Like, Cousin Stills. I mean, yeah, that's kind of the biggest name. Man, you, you had mentioned a couple of your influences, man. I found this interesting. You read off, you said Ice Cube, Jay-Z, Tupac, yeah. but you're a 90s baby. And me, see, me and Lou, we washed. We we 80s baby. You're so washed. Washed. You're Super washed. washed. So we always, we always find it interesting to wonder, like, how somebody born when all this was going on, like how did you get put on to that? Did somebody introduce you to that or did you kind of stumble upon it on your own? Yeah, so my brother is an, is an 80s, my oldest brother's an 80s baby. Shout out to my brother, Jason Hillman, my oldest brother. He, uh, when I was three years old, he uh, literally, uh, I used to always like go into like his like CDs and stuff like that. And like, he would just be mad. Cause I would just like, I know like using his Frisbees or stuff like that. <laughs> Scratching so his CDs yeah, all up. Yeah, you didn't even know his pain back then as a kid. <laughs> hey <right>? boy. <laughs> so he was man. just like really, really frustrated about that. So he's like, you know what, man, since he's so interested in it. So he literally took, sat me down one day, I was chilling and he put headphones on my head and he played the first song I ever heard wrote rap song because at that time my parents we would listen to soul music gospel music r&b like it wasn't really a lot of rap if, unless it was 1980s rap that my dad was listening to like you know what i'm saying rock can back daddy Kane, that's sonic all those type of guys i mean my brother so he had to sneak this type of stuff like you know what i'm saying so he put them on my head and the first song he played was politics as usual on the reasonable doubt jay-z's reasonable doubt album Man. From that day forward, I was like, I literally listened to it, and he literally said, like, he remembers to this day, my mouth was, like, open. Like, I was, like, glued as if I was, like, <laughs> I was there, but I wasn't there. I was like, yo, what am I listening to right now? Yeah. And from that day forward, it was like, I got to hear more of this. And so Jay-Z was my favorite rapper from that day. So that's kind of how it worked. And then from Jay-Z, just stemmed to other 90s artists and just going even far back to, like, New York for, like, Big L and, Big Pun, obviously Biggie, and you know what I'm saying, and all those type of, you know, and, um, Mike Geronimo, and a lot of those guys who was, you know, like back there, DMX, obviously back there doing it during that time in New York, and you know, obviously branching out to the West. Though, me branching out to Ice Cube in the West Coast is just personal. Like mm -hmm. that was just that was just like I just kind of developed that myself throughout middle school. I kind of was just like had a you know, love for like West Coast style and music because it just sounded different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It kind of caught my caught my attention. So that was kind of how the Ice Cube and Tupac thing kind of rolled in. Yeah. Do you listen to any of the 90s stuff? Like, I mean, excuse me, not the 90s stuff, but like since you listen to so much 90s stuff, do the stuff yeah. from your generation, like do you rock with that or do you kind of just tolerate it, turn your nose so up at it? So my friends, they always they always say I'm too old. I'm stuck in the past still. I'm stuck in the 90s. Yeah. I don't, there's so many new projects that have come out that I don't. My friends have to play it in either my car, their car, or we chilling or whatever. And I'll hear it at a club or a party or whatever. And I'm, oh, what is this? They're What's like, that? yo, you're like 40 years old, bro. Like, how do you not know this just came out? Like, I'm like, I, I'm still stuck on, like, I don't know if you got, I'm still stuck on Red Man's There in the Dark Side album. I'm still mm. stuck on, like, you know what I'm saying? All those, I'm For still sure. stuck on stuff. For, like, playing albums, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I, I wouldn't say I turn my nose up at it because, obviously, I could still, I got, you know, moods, and every now and then you want to listen to that because you're not going to listen to, uh, you're not going to listen to, well, at least me, you're not going to listen to, like, um, uh, 22 twos in the club, like <laughs> right. right now, you're just not, the dude's probably gonna tell you to get out. Right. But it's just like, so every now and then you're gonna hear that, but for the most part, when I'm chilling, I don't really listen to too much of what's going on nowadays. It's more so 
old school stuff because they're actually talking about something and the beats are, you know, was dope and they, it's actually it's actually a message to it. So yeah, so I know I played football a long time ago. I was sorry though, but just in Very. the locker room, I know what type of you come on. <laughs> I know what type of place a locker room can be though. So right, do, how do you deal with like kind of that that uh, backlash that you probably get from teammates and even coaches? Right. Like, do they kind of step in your way, thinking it would interfere with your preparation? How yeah. do you juggle that? So, so my teammates actually were the biggest supporters. When I said like they gave me the hard time, they would just play it at the parties and just shout me out that I was the one that did it. Kind of embarrassing because I'm a low key type of guy, especially back then. Like, I was right. very like. I just played for my friends and kind of, so when they put it on, my boy Mike played it in the rotation. I was like, oh man. So the people were just like, but then people reacted to it like, yo, this is tough. Yo, he's actually going. And the beat was kind of something you could move to. So people were dancing while, you know what I'm saying? So it was cool. Now, so for the most part, now there's some teammates who are like, bro, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you're going to have a couple of those guys, but then, but for the most part, my, my position coach at the time, he loved it. He was all for it. Like he was like, yeah, this is tough. This is great, man. It's not – your grades are fine. You, you know, you, you're doing re well in your rehab. Like, obviously, I mean, you got extra time. By all means, you obviously got talent. You should do it. Like, no problem. You know what I'm saying? Like, but my but, – but the higher-ups, as far as, like, you know, I'm not going to mention names, but the higher-ups, they weren't really hyped about the whole idea of, you know, the starter – you know, they felt like it was going to interfere with, you know, me coming back the next year as far mm -hmm. as is he going to be focused? Is he, you know, is he going to be re really, really ready? Is he going to come back the same? You know, he, he's not, he, do you really want to be a rapper? Like, it was like a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of questions, right? And so in my mind, I'm like, yeah, I mean, obviously at some point I want to be an artist. I want to do this down the road. That's always been my dream is to have my own record label, to be a professional football player, be a professional athlete. I'm on record label and be on the record label making music and helping mm -hmm. other people make music. You know what I'm saying? And so that's always been a dream of mine, but it wasn't really uh, up top from the, up, from the higher ups. It wasn't really, uh, uh, they weren't proponents of it. You know what I'm saying? So it kind of was the reason why it was a, such a long layoff, you know, from the first, from the last time I put something out till now. So, yeah. Or paint the picture for me, man. I, like I didn't play football ever. Um, I, I was on that basketball court. Docker. I was on that. <laughs> I was on that basketball <laughs> court. What paint the picture for the locker room? You, uh, you in the Giants locker room? Are people listening to music out loud? They got their headphones on. They zoned yeah. out. Like what's what's the vibe like musically in the locker room? It's it's like it's like a like. 30 concerts at once right <laughs> so you either got you got some of the guys that are kind of locked in they just kind of stay to themselves and stay in their locker and they have their their ear, their beats or the whatever in their ear and that's just it right that's so you're gonna have those guys but for the most part you got the guys with the big speakers that are portable and they're all in their locker and they're all playing a different song so you're <laughs> listening to like you're listening you're like okay you got the corner with the running backs that we playing something to get turned up or whatever some the linebackers is probably playing old 50, like get Richard Die trying. You got country on one side, you got gospel probably on one side in the Sunday. Like, so you, you're listening and you're like, okay, it's like a whole lot of stuff. But yeah, it's literally like maybe like 10 concerts at once going on. And everybody's kind of like, at least, at least during the week, Green Day is obviously it's more central. Like, all right, we all playing gotcha. this or we all, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, for, for the, for during the week, it's like, it's chaos. Like everybody listening to anything. Anything. If you if you had your choice, what's and, and this game day, and, and we getting ready playoff game, big dog game. What mm -hmm. would you want to hear played? Like, what, what what's your choice? I'm probably I'm probably gonna go to Meek. Obviously, you can't go wrong with Meek. That's Meek is is like he a lot of his stuff I listen to. It kind of just like gets me in the mold. But for me, I kind of chill. Like, it's something called uh, well, Maryland knows. I mean, Baltimore club music was kind of how you know it started. But Jersey Club music, that's something that's always I've been listening to Jersey Club music since high school. And mm. people like it's it's fast paced and it kind of makes me think like, all right, you gotta play fast. Like play mm. fast, play upbeat, play, you know what I'm saying? No, cause I don't my thing is I don't really like being nervous. I don't really like having nervous and I don't like being around people that are nervous. Like I don't like <laughs> feeling like touche. You know what I'm saying? Like I just the energy. Don't like, uh, yeah, 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 I just don't no. like like if you're if you're afraid, don't be around me. Like yes. you know what I'm, I'm not yes. I don't I don't want to be afraid. I don't want to be like I just want to that's why I listen to the music. It kind of 
And coming into the game, though, like driving into the game, probably listen to gospel, pray, you know, stuff like that. Kind of just stay calm before you kind of, you know, get hype and get ready, but stuff like that. But yeah, probably Meek and Jersey Club music is like the playlist go to. Word. I thought you were going to say 22 twos. I ain't going to lie. I was about to say, come on, man. You got to turn up for some, man. Nah, nah, nah. That's during the week. That's during the week. (laughs) For sure. So what about, um, I know know you said you wanted to start a record label and and you always had the aspirations. When you were in school, did you take music business? Is that what your focus was? No, I didn't. I actually took the history of hip hop. That's what I took. One of them, which was one of my minors, which I, yeah, was one of my minors was the history of hip hop and uh, communication. And so I didn't really take business courses. Um, I might say at some point I will, but um, my I've been blessed to have all my best friends are accountants, fi- financial advisors, and financial analysis guys. Nice. <laughs> like guys I've known up. for best friends who I've had for almost almost twenty years now. I'll be twenty years in twenty twenty two, so oh. eighteen years. So like, and they they just pretty much are like, look, like yeah. I mean, you may not know the business thing. You may have the capital and the ideas and the talent. We know the business stuff. Like, so you don't got to no. like stretch your hand too far to anybody else. And they know exactly what to do with their professionals. They, you know, what I'm saying so. They help as much as they can without it interfering with their actual professional career. Because sometimes, you know, the the they they make you choose. You know what I'm saying? Like their job. You, sometimes there's certain things you can't do. But mm-hmm. as much as they they do as much as they can with what they can, you know, they can do. So yeah, I'm, I've been blessed to have been able to have people in my circle that can help me. You know, in that That's in that dope. effect. Yeah. What's the you history need- of hip hop teaching? What's that? Well, like what you get from them courses? Man, just oh my goodness! So we talking about everything from beef, from hip hop beef to theory to at Boston College. Different, yeah. We had a teacher who we kind of fought for it. We kind of fought for it during the thing or during one of the times. Like my, he was actually a religion teacher of mine, and okay. we actually and he, and we would always have these conversations because he was a Nas guy, and so mm-hmm. I'm a Jay Z guy. Yeah, so I'm a Jay Z guy. <laughs> All right, like we're gonna have to have a conversation, you know what I'm saying? So he always, it always was at my last class of the day, usually. And so I'm like, I mean, I got time, I got nothing else to do. I just like sit there and we just chop it up for like 20, 30 minutes after class, like oh, a couple fine. times. And he's like, man, you really know what you're talking about, da da Because I really knew what I was talking about. And so he was like, man, would you be interested? I mean, I got a few, I got like a few hundred kids that are interested in this, like this class, this whole idea. I'm trying to make it in the minor, but it's kind of small right now. I said, well, we should make it a class at first. And then when it, if it grows, like you could turn it into a minor. And that's kind of how that's it started. Right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it was like a little small class, like 50 kids talking about hip hop, just talking about hip hop, talking about hip hop. And it's like, it was like a two credit course, but it was like, and then it turned into a three credit course down the road. But like, it was like kids were just pulling up talking about everything from Beastie Boys to like yeah. the fat, to the fat boys. Like we were talking about any and everything, like different regions of hip hop, how it started. How a drill started, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Houston's H- Houston's impact on music, like you know what I'm saying, like all types of different styles and different regions. And it wasn't really like any right or wrong answers. It was kind of just, but well, there was some answers that was like, all right, like you're just a little, you, you're too far <laughs> out left with that one. But, I mean, right, right. For the, for the most part, it was just conversational and everything was cool. And every now and then, you might have like a like five open ended questions on an exam, and then you you know if you you know, wrote something clear, then you were gonna get you a good grade. Get like, you know, yeah, so you know what I'm saying? So that was, but it was more so conversational and everybody rocked it. And that was, they became big enough to become a minor. And so I was like, all right, cool. That's, that's <laughs> what's 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 They had what's none what's of that shit when we was in school. Man, none man, of that man, shit. Man, none of that, yeah, bro. It was, it was literally just something we thought about, like out of nowhere in a religion that's class. Fine. Crazy, right? That is. That's hard. Well, um, uh, back to the mogul talk real quick. Growing up, or even to this day, who's a hip hop mogul that you look at and admire and respect the moves that they made? Right, uh, Master P for hey. Master P, uh, Jay Z, of course. Um, yeah, really, Master P, Jay Z. I mean, I got how'd you get into P though? You, your brother, you were from up north. Like, how'd you get into into so, the No so, Limit movie? So, my brother's the oldest part of our family. My brother, he's 30, he's 34. My brother's the oldest part of our family. Everybody, everybody his age and younger in our family is from the North, from New York, Philly, or New Jersey. Everybody older from the South. 
Oh, okay. they literally, literally, I'm from island parents, so I have Guyana and Jamaica, and they all came from those countries to the south. Like different every part of the every part. I literally go in the south. I can go in the south and have a family member from every part of the south. <laughs> and so literally southern music, like I literally can have I literally have so many like southern artists that I listen listen to or have listened to or know about. Like I go down south and they'll play something and I'm just like, Well, how do you know about that? I'm just like <laughs> I mean, with my southern teammates, like, what you know about that, man? Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I'd be like, you from Jersey, ain't you? I'm like, yeah, but, you know? And I tell them, and so, like, I can have that. But, yeah, Master P, man, him. And, I I mean, I was, I was going to say Birdman, but his whole – that whole situation with Lil Wayne kind of took me off a little, mm-hmm. him a little bit. That was kind of swine. Yeah. Uh, no, pun, no, no pun intended. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, at the, at the same time, it's like – but those are, like, the two big ones. The two big dogs that I literally looked up to and saw because Master P, like I saw the I saw his the documentary. It was like Fire. he really took 10k from like his grandfather and turned that into 250 million. You know what I'm saying? Like little things like yep. that. Jay Z, everybody knows his story. You know what I'm saying? Like just kind of went on a limb. You know, and so that those guys are kind of guys that I looked up to and kind of said, okay, they made me. Get, gave me the dream and put it in my head to say, I mean, I, I want to do that one day. I want to have a label, something to call my own, where I can help people, re, like, you know what I'm saying, realize it. Some of the, realize their talent. Like, some of the greatest, like, without Rockefeller Records, we never would have had Yay. We never would have had, mm-hmm. you know, some of the greatest, like, you know what I'm saying, Mas- and Master P and all those guys, we never would have had some of the greatest, like, artists to come out <laughs> of the South and, you know what I'm saying? So, Yay, Beanie Siegel, all everybody, right? Yeah. So they doing things like that, putting people on and stuff like that. That's that's something that I've always wanted for you know myself and the people around me. You know, because there's nice. a lot of talent around me. Why not? You know, what I'm saying utilize it it's all day. Now, now you got you got a little teaser project out right now. Um, yeah. Long overdue, right? And you you got something that you're cooking up for the top of the year. Yeah, yeah. So I got uh, so long overdue. It's coming out. It's already out on SoundCloud right now. So people can go check that out. It's gonna be out on all streaming platforms within probably the next day or two. It's taking a little longer than you know expected, but you know that's how it is. And um and um so during that time, even before we got the EP, well after the EP comes is coming out in January, I figured I got a lot of friends who are dropping projects and things like that. Like you know, great. Example, uh, shout of Spence. He's gonna be on my. Uh, he's gonna be on my EP. Uh, just phenomenal. He's killing the game right now. He's, he's taking it to the next level. Uh, he's also he's from pretty much one of the close towns that you know I grew up around. Uh, he's gonna be on my EP. He's a phenomenal, phenomenal guy. I mean, he's got millions of views on YouTube and streams, and just going crazy. Um, and so he's got an album coming out in November. I got some other you know guys that. My friend Don Dada, guy that I grew up around, he's got a couple projects. He got a project coming out in December. So I figured, you know, I'm just gonna wait till the first quarter of the, you know, music thing, drop it in January, you know, let the smoke clear a little bit, you know, push those guys stuff out as much as I can. And you know what I'm saying? And, and, and kind of do it like that. But yeah. in but in the meantime, I'm gonna have another project coming out uh, called Politically Incorrect. It's literally probably about maybe three weeks from now, it's literally just talking about, it's just a social comment, social commentary about what's going on. It's it's pretty much the elephant in the room, uh, you know what I'm saying? The issues, you know, the police, the, the injustice, the police brutality, all those things tied in one. Um, we're gonna be talking about that. It's pretty, I'm pretty excited about that one. Um, and, and pretty much as that's going on, you know, Chuck kind of throwing maybe a song or two a week of artists mm. that I'm working with, artists that I'm working with, you know, from here, got artists in New York, artists out in, you know, uh, out of South Philly, and you know what I'm saying? And, and so those those areas and kind of, you know, showcasing the talent that, you know, may be on the record label when it launches in February, you know what I'm saying? So that's kind of what, you know, it's on the, on the horizon. But the EP, I'm very, very, very uh, excited about it. It's dope. I kind of, I got the rough version already done. And I played it for some people, and they're kind of like was shocked, but that I was like, able to make, which I didn't really take it as like a slight, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Just like I kind of was like, okay, you know what I'm saying? That's kind of what I wanted. I want to shock people because when they hear it, I want people to hear it and be like, "That's you." I'm like, yeah, 
You know what I'm saying? And so yeah. that's, that's kind of what I'm going for. But yeah, it's a lot of things on the horizon as far as the music thing going. I ain't gonna lie. I clicked on the three piece. I was scared. We get a lot of music submitted. We get a lot right. of people reach out to us, shooters. I was scared right. for a second. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but I played it. Now nah, you you spitting. I get it to you. It's hard. I, you know hey, what you saying? do got some nice stuff on there. You do it's got some nice tough. stuff. I can't that. even front. Appreciate that. And we wouldn't even <laughs> just tell you that. We'll tell you you were some slaw if you was. We, we you, but you do oh, got nah, some nice oh, stuff. Nah. Man. <clears throat> I appreciate that, man. That was just kind of something just to get people to say, just to get people to let me, let them know that I'm back, you know, doing it again. I mean, a lot of people, because I've been saying it for the last five years. I've literally been saying, like, yeah, I got to drop an EP, and then something comes up. And then I, I got to drop a couple songs, and then something comes up. And then my friend's like, yo, man, yo, do a song with me. All right, something comes up. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's now it's like I'm in a space where it's like, okay, well, we got time. We got to do something. You know what I'm saying? Like we we got the time to put it out, so we might as well put something out. And I'm excited about it. And it kind of is just like a little, you know, little little like you said, little teaser, just kind of get you know the thing going again. And you know, it's it's it should be pretty good. Man, uh, I, I gotta ask you this before before we get you out of here: Super Bowl MVP or Grammy Album of the Year? Which one? Uh, I'm taking your two passions, man. You got to choose one if you can have one. <laughs> I gotta be a Super Bowl MVP, man. Oh, that, right. That's the first. That's the first dream. I'll take a Grammy nomination though. Okay. <laughs> so. but the Super Bowl, Super Bowl MVP. That means I won the Super Bowl. That means I, I knocked out two dreams and one. Mm. I can't. I mean, football, football, football is my football is my number one. Music is one A, but people, football is my number one, man. And if I can shoot, if I can just win a Super Bowl, and I just that would just be just unbelievable in itself. So. Definitely yeah. Super Bowl and definitely Super Bowl MVP. Definitely. Nice. I respect it, man. Hey, listen, where can people kind of follow up and catch up with what you got going on, bro? Yeah, so you can people can follow me at Thrillerman. That's a lot of that's my you know actual you know handle Thrillerman. Um, you also can follow RNL RNL the label. That's the that's the label's Instagram, and that's usually where you'll find a lot of the music, a lot of the you know the news and things like that. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, those are the two those are the two handles that you can follow if you want to get a lot of that stuff. A lot of that stuff at first would be on SoundCloud, which is Juan Don. That's my SoundCloud. And um, yeah, yeah, a lot of that stuff will be on those two handles, man. Everything you need as far as the music thing, you'll see it on there. There it is, man. Thriller, man. We appreciate the time, yes, big sir. dog. Yes, sir. Absolutely, appreciate man. appreciate you guys, man. Definitely that. appreciate that. Definitely no, appreciate, we appreciate you, guys, you bro. Hey, hey, hey we're gonna we're gonna be rooting for you, man. I wish you luck and everything you got going on, bro. Real talk. Appreciate Unless you're playing you the got, Cowboys. Man. Unless you're playing the <laughs> Cowboys, and I gotta root against you, big dogs. Hey, man. But hey, any other business. time, I got you. <laughs> hey, no death, no death, no death. Appreciate that. All right, good, bro. bro. Hey, we'll be back right after this, y'all. Don't go no well. Hey, man, we are back. Shout out to uh, Jonathan Hilleman, man. Appreciate you coming on the show, big dog. Make sure y'all check out his project, Long Overdue out on streaming sites right now. Absolutely, man, that was a dope conversation, man. Unfortunately, he was a New York giant. Get that cowboy in his life. Oh, He'll be all right. He'll be all right. Shout out to him, though, man, we enjoyed that. You got some wins and some losses. I'm a yeah, man, what we got? First and foremost, shout out to Boise, Idaho, man. They got their first in 2020, their first hip hop radio station. How you feel about that? Big W's uh, Power 105.5 for all our Boise listeners. If you didn't know, you can Shout now listen to, to hip hop. Absolutely, man. <laughs> Shout out to Boise. But it's really slick an L because it's taking forever uh, for them to get it. That's retarded. Uh, but W to everybody that get new jobs over there. There's new jobs for a couple of people, I'm sure. So that's super dope. Shout out to Boise. <laughs> they turned it from a sports talk station to this. Boy, some people are going to be surprised today when they tune in for their Seattle Seahawks talk. <laughs> um, another L goes out to Little Yachty. Uh, earlier, we talked about his new show that got picked up on Queeby. Uh, that uh, Quibbly, whatever you said, they're, they're actually defunct now. So that may not, well, they won't be coming out on there at all. But HBO has decided to pick it up, allegedly. What do you think? You here for the yeah. reality show? Yeah, man, it's called Public Figures. He's executive producing it. They saying it's like making an America, how to make it in America, which was super slept on back in the day. So I'm excited to see what it's hitting on, man. He, I don't think he's in it. I just think he's got, he put the money behind it and produced it. So that's super dope. 
Yeah, I'm here for that. Especially loosely based on his it. life. Uh, L goes out to the baby. Mm. Uh, the baby has had the police call to his Charlotte residence. Get this. 31 times. I'm not sure how long he's lived there, but 31 times seems like a lot. 31 times in less than a year since oh. December of 2019, he's had a police call to his house. 14 of those was because his alarm system went off, though. That so. ain't no excuse. I'm, st- hey, nigga, you know, a nigga on the road shit. here forgot his little code and shit. <laughs> that shit, nigga. <laughs> these these niggas. I'm sure I find niggas if they came to my house and the alarm go off while like you there, nigga, that's a thousand dollars. Now niggas, cause the police come and they find me for it. Like, nigga, quit playing, running the spot hot, man. The babies uh-huh. just don't believe in being low key. Like, if it ain't that's one true. thing, it's a motherfucking lover. Like, he, I'm glad that he's all the way legit in everything that he does, cause that nigga, he don't get the eyes off of him, man. That's At, to it. Two of those were for domestic disturbances. His on and off girlfriend poured bleach on about ten thousand worth of clothes. That's the baby. That sounds like the baby life. That's the. And life that sounds like a day life. in the life of the baby for sure. Absolutely. Police stopped by today. My girl bleached ten thousand dollars worth of clothes. He don't want to need the TV show based on he his definitely life. Definitely need a TV show. That nigga. That nigga. Wild. Hey, hey his, his crib is two point have... three. Are, are you surprised by that, or is that just about right where, you, where he's supposed to be? I'd expect that. That's a nice house in Charlotte, man. What? That's a fire <laughs> ass house in Charlotte. Shit. Um, and the baby do too. <laughs> like it's just too much, man. Like the police coming to your house twice in a year is a lot. Yeah, twice. Thirty one right. times, bro. Like relax, nigga. Grow up, nigga. The police at my house. Can't. That's a good point. But um, team, what uh, we got bo- to end this out on? Bonus W, man. Rick Ross buying 87 acres of land for a million dollars cash in Fayetteville, Georgia. Big boy cop. I'm not sure what he's about to do with these 87 acres. I don't know if he's going to be on some Kanye shit, if he's going to be on some Yellowstone ranch shit. I don't know what he's about to be on, but he must got plans if he just dropped a meal ticket on Probably cook that'd be a good flip, regardless of what he what he gonna do for it. If he gonna sell it to a developer, that was a good move right there. Shout out to Ross, man. I love Ross business moves. Ross cooking, man. Um, on deck of the week goes to iTunes. Shout out to All Good Twenty One. Left a comment, short, straight to the point. Dope podcast. Gave us five appreciate stars. You. We'll take it. Appreciate, we appreciate that. You. Uh, Absolutely. Person of little words. We appreciate it. <laughs> I'll take it. Absolutely. Uh, hmm? Go ahead. Uh, what do you have to put me on this week? I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but I started listening to the book again. So I will mention it again if I have mentioned it before. And that's Talking to Strangers by Malcolm Gladwell. Easily one of the best books that I've ever read. Um, just the different scenarios. And if you communicate with people for a living, you do podcasts or whatever it is that you do, you have to talk or communicate with people. This book is a great book just to help you uh, understanding the approaches to conversations. It's fire. Talking to strangers, Malcolm Gladwell. When you got to put us on. Yeah, I remember when he was on Breakfast Club talking about that book. It's just that hella is, interesting. That shit is stupid good, nigga. I believe uh, it. Yeah, it's this it it, it it centers around Sandra Bland. Like he started the book talking about uh the whole stop. And again, the, the book is talking to strangers. So he talks about how the approach could have been different from the officers in if he knew her or it, like just different things about her. That shit is really, really good. I highly recommend it. And he's he's doing it on the Audible, so it sounds more like a podcast each mm-hmm. chapter as opposed to like you just listen to a mundane book reader. Uh, so it's really, really good. That's dope. Um, I'm going to put you on. We're going to Amazon Prime video. Uh, I watched this South Korean movie. It's only the second South Korean movie I've ever seen in my life. Uh, it's called Train to Busan. And it was fire. That was um, on Netflix. Yeah, that was on Netflix a while ago, a couple months ago. And they took it off and it's on. Now it's on Prime. Or at least it was supposed to have it taken off. You stuck with it. 
That shit fire. I got to. Bro. I thought it was going to be the, the preview and the, uh, well, not the preview, but the, the title read to it was fire. And I clicked on it and it was in South Korea and I got out of there. Yeah, like, that I shit made, dope. I made it one scene. I was gone. Yeah. That motherfucker was right, dude. Like the it's it's a zombie movie. It was Halloween wow. night. You can go watch you something scary on Halloween, whatever. That is. It's a little traditional. It didn't seem like a zombie household. movie. Who? Yeah. It didn't seem like a zombie movie. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Then you might be talking about something different. Then no, I just got one. They, they was on the train when it first started off. Was that different? Like when it first came on. Oh, they didn't. The no, they yeah, they don't start on the train though. Oh, okay. This may be something different there. Yeah, but it definitely ends up on the train for sure. <laughs> but it don't start off like that until like maybe like fifteen minutes in. Mm. Yeah, man. Expand your that. palate, man. Watch watch some South Korean shit, man. Hit, I watched them. Parasite. Can... That was decent. yeah, Parasite South Korean too. Yeah, that's the only other one I've ever seen. It ain't even. It ain't about South Korean for me and expanding my palate. This is I'm not trying to see no zombie movie. I don't do zombies. I don't do. Uh, Freddie, Jason, I ain't doing none of that. Freddie and Jason shit played out, though. That shit played I'm out. good off though, scary though. movies, period. Paranormal activity and all of that. That shit, that's, that's been whack. That shit whack. Yeah. Um, man, hey, man, y'all do us a favor. Uh, support The Real on Patreon.com slash Realville. The link is in the description. Shout out to all the subscribers. Brand new content coming every month, like how we always do. Uh, get your bonus fix, man. We got content from On Deck, content from Full Sport Press, fresher than your average. We talking big boy movie shit on there. Uh, we did a, man, listen, we review, excuse me, we rewatched next Friday. That's coming this month, dog. This shit is, it's, that's a good one. Y'all, y'all gonna Absolutely. wanna check that out, man. So we got different tiers. Read what's I'm in the tiers you, and nigga. select which one you wanna get, man, and, and enjoy I'm the content. You, nigga. Nigga, nigga, say one more motherfucking word. Hey, man, that scene will never not make me laugh, cry laughing, period. Be 80, nigga, I'm gonna die laughing at this shit. Facts. That's, that's an all timer right there. One hundred percent, man. Make sure y'all subscribe to YouTube.com/slash Realville Road to a thousand subscribers. We appreciate the support, y'all. We out. <laughs>